Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I want to do a really detailed tutorial here on how to manage multiple dates in your fact table. Okay, now the reason I've decided to do this is because uh, after monitoring the Enterprise DNA support forum for quite, quite a period of time, I get a lot of questions about this, a lot. Um, this is just one of them that I'm, I've, I've landed on here, a, a, quite a recent one at timing of, the, uh, of this recording. And I know this can be confusing. I know it can be confusing, especially when you're just starting out and you're wondering how can I write a formula that enables me to calculate the, um, you know, calculate something where I have multiple dates in a particular row in my fact table. So it could be like order date versus ship date versus expiration date or arrival date or something like that. All of this information might be in one row of your data set and you, you need to do some sort of calculation like how many orders do we have currently um, being shipped or how many orders are waiting to be shipped or something project based um, how 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 many um, people have we got working on a particular project uh, or how many days has this project been going those those types of, of insights okay and look it's not, it's not that easy if you're just starting out on Power BI. That's why I want to do a detailed, um, I want to run through a detailed example here so um, so you can use this as a reference going forward, okay? Now let's have a look at the tables just to be absolutely clear what I'm talking about here, okay? Now this is a just a demo data set that I have and, and think about this like, this is like, um, you know, there's so many scenarios where this is the case where you might have say like an order date, right? An expiration date, a created date, a requested date, date, an updated date. So, so many dates on one particular table. Now, there's a, a number of things you have to get right here. And the biggest place that people get, um, get caught up or get confused is how to set up your model. Okay, because it's it's basically it's a two step process here. You need to get your model correct, then you need to calculate, uh, write the the correct DAX formula, and then understand how the DAX formula is working, because it's a slightly a more complex pattern. <clears throat> but the great thing is it is a pattern, so you can actually reuse this technique over and over again whenever you come across this scenario. Now the ultimate calculation I want to show here is I want to show on any particular date on any date, how many orders we have, which are currently, say, live, right? So they are between the order date and the expiration date. So on any day, how many orders um, are still live that um, have been ordered but have not expired, basically, okay? And this is, you know, we're basically just counting up information that sits between two dates, right? Multiple dates, and you could, um, you know, this could be, this could totally vary depending on on what um, what what you're trying to solve for, but the technique will be the same. Okay, I want to first come to the model to show you what you need to do here. Okay, so the key here, the key here is this. Okay, so you look at look at how I've set this model up. I have used inactive relationships, and this is what you need to do. Okay, to get this to get this to work to ultimately get the correct calculation. You need, you do not want, or you do, you can't have one relationship which is active. Basically, if you go down this route where you need to calculate, um, ca um, you calculate logic like this, where you need to count, you know, things in progress, right? Orders in progress, sales in progress, etc. Um, you need to have these inactive relationships, and um, you'll see why in a second. I will describe exactly why in a second. Uh, why you actually need these um, because you know this is just one calculation you might be doing right um, you might have other calculations that require some sort of relationship but I'm going to show you how you can turn a relationship from inactive to active within a formula okay the reason why you have to have it like this especially if you want to run these specific calcs is because th there's no other way to do it Right, really, and there, 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 may, there may well be, to be honest, but this is totally the easiest way to do it if you just understand the modeling aspect of it and get the modeling aspect right. Um, there, there, there likely is some other far more advanced and complex way you, you will have to write your formula if you do want to have an active relationship, but I don't recommend it. I recommend this way totally. It is far simpler if you just get your mind around the model, okay? 
Now we're going to um, write a formula here that basically works through it works through logic from the date like from the date table and then uh, it takes it takes con a context from the date table but then works through some advanced logic inside of this table to then calculate the results for us okay so this is ultimately the I, I put a visualization here because I want to show you what this is actually saying okay so in this in this particular uh, time frame here this is how many or, uh, orders are between the uh, created date uh, what was it the order date and the expiration date on any day okay and so you see here that very sort of around april 2019 huge spike uh, and there is a whole lot of orders still unexpired so we're getting up to five thousand, and then it drops away because as we know all the all the orders expire right so maybe you know your data is going to look totally different to this this is just has just um, got random expiration dates out way into the future but at least you can sort of see what we're trying to do here okay we're trying to work out how many of each of these rows are sitting um, are sitting live or sitting active on any particular date okay now let's drill into this table here and have a look at the formula that we're writing okay so what we need to do is that we need to work out what our total um, orders are live between see, see how many are live on any particular day to start off with just total orders really simple right I've just done a count rows of that data table then we want to count out how many orders we have on any particular day but we want to do it in a much different context right we want to work out you know is it um, is the your order date less than this particular day and is the expiration greater than this particular day for each individual order right and then count up all of those and, and count up all of those individual orders so let's just walk through it here okay so what we at every single row right we currently this is quite interesting we currently have zero context coming from the date table because you'll see here that if i um if we see over here the date in this table is actually coming from the date table right but we don't have any active relationships here so nothing in theory is being filtered in this context we're doing all of the filtering inside of the formula okay now i want you to recognize uh have a look at this part of the formula first max date and actually min date on every single row here is just returning the date that's all it's doing okay max or min it doesn't actually matter in this case but you do want it this way around because that's how you're going to get the total there okay so let's say 23rd of our uh, 21st of march 2019 right that, that on this particular row right here this max date is is equal to that exact date so what we're doing is we are on every single row here we are iterating through because that's what you do inside a filter we are iterating through every single order date so we're iterating through i think it's about 5700 rows right we're looking at every single order date there and and working out is any order date is any of those order dates less than or equal to the the max date so 23rd 21st of march on this day if it is then we're going to evaluate it to true right so what's going to happen once we do this is we're going to have just a table of orders which sit have a, a um, an order date less than this date then we're going to come down to this part and i'm going to say and do similar logic but we're going to go through the expiration dates we're going to work through every expiration date of of the table that remains here and we're going to say does the expiration date also equal to is, is also greater than or equal to that same very same date and then if both of those evaluate to true so if all the trues here and all the trues here then that is going to and then, then we're going to count up that particular order and that's how we get this 477 because every um, 477 orders evaluated uh, to true where the order date was less than this date and um, well it could it was probably actually more sorry but then um, when you included this particular logic uh, it probably reduced the table even more this virtual table even more and that's how we got the 477 and that's how it changes as we go along right and then it's it does that evaluation at every single row so this is a very intensive calculation which is going on here 
And then the reason why we um, have the total here, because think about what's happening at the total, uh, in, in the total, there, there is no date context, right? So um, at all. So basically, what's happening is we are working through every single order here and saying, is it less than or greater to the very last dates that we have in our date table? So that's going to basically evaluate to every single order being true, and then we're going to say, um, then as we work through all of those orders which are evaluated true, we're going to say, is the expiration date greater than or equal to the min date in our date table? And these are also all going to evaluate to true as well and so that's going to give us the 5743 which is also what is our total orders actually is as well so it's, so that's why we um, want to use the min and max so that our total actually uh, makes sense as well okay so what I'm gonna uh, and I'm, I'm gonna revert back to the model here and say okay why set it up like this um, now it's cleaner that's the that's the biggest reason why you want to do this and the other reason why you want to want to have these inactive relationships is because you want to be able to turn them on if you do say need some calculation say by order date right okay so say for example we want to and I'm going to show you how to do this as well um, this is a real deep dive this one so um, into into these multiple date scenarios so we're going to go total orders by order date okay now this is where you use a function called uh, use relationship so I'm going to go calculate total orders and then I'm going to come down to another row here and I'm going to go use relationship now this is why you need those inactive relationships if you you could in theory get this calculation here without any relationship funnily enough but you do need an inactive one if you do want to create some other type of um, information or other type of calculations here like this so like total orders by um, by order date and so I'm just going to link up I'm, just, I'm basically going to turn on I'm going to turn on that relationship okay and so then I'm going to go order date here and what I've what I've just done there is I have then gone and manually so you see here I'll um, I'll expand this a little bit total orders by order date and so you see here now I'm getting this this interesting I'm just getting how many orders we had on any one day right and it's interesting here so you see here we have a um, we have a bump of seven orders right seven orders happened on that day and that's why we have a bump of seven orders between three five six and three six three but basically all I've done with this is I've turned on this relationship this one here I've turned it on uh, virtually okay now if you didn't have this relationship at all you couldn't do that right and so that's why these inactive ones are really really important and then you just turn them on virtually with the use relationship and as soon as you've turned them on here you can then go and re branch out into all the different um, patterns etc that you could need like um, you know cumulative totals moving averages anything from there once you set up this core, these core calculations okay so hopefully this is slightly longer than normal um, but I really wanted to just cover a lot of key things here because in the support forum here we get asked this all the time is I, I just know it is it is very confusing and it's been had to solve it a few times and and I think that a, a really strong video on how to do this um, was definitely required so hopefully you can understand now these um, these inactive relationships why you need to use them the formula pattern that you need to use um, and can reuse in multiple different ways and then also how you can turn on these inactive relationships and why you would want to um, depending on sort of what calculation um, you want to show um, in your uh, in your report okay hopefully hopefully you got a lot out of this one if you did throw the video a like really appreciate it don't forget to subscribe to enterprise dna tv lots of great content coming to you um, and uh, look out for more videos very soon okay talk to you soon cheers <laughs>